Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the grid system and the spacing that we're going to have for our design system. And the purpose of this particular video is just to define how things are going to be spaced from each other, what their height, what, what the ideal height is going to be. Let's say if we keep the height fixed of certain elements like buttons or maybe icon buttons or certain things along those lines or maybe even icons, right? So we're going to go with that. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to define what we're going to do here. So we can go with one of the determined grid systems like the eight point grid or the four, four point grid, but there's a lot of debate and I like, like to keep things flexible rather than restrict ourselves to a particular design system. You can go ahead and choose one of those, but I would personally prefer using a design system that's going to be inheriting a lot of the values from those, but I'm going to create a design system or a grid system for the spacing myself. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're basically just going to go ahead and we're going to create a component here. And this component is just going to define how that grid system particularly is laid out. So I'm going to create a frame here. We're just going to give it a slight color. So let's just go ahead and give it this one and probably create an auto layout over it. And I'm going to say two pixels. So this is imagine this is going to be two pixels. Just going to place it above. And let's move it at the bottom, maybe center it. And let's reduce this font size to something light and probably choose <clears throat> the smallest variation, regular, have it above. So we're going to have a two pixel option. And again, just really important to point out is the grid system or the spacing that we're defining here isn't necessarily going to be created into components or anything. You're not going to use them. These are just for your visual reference and the reference for developers as to how things are going to be positioned and spaced or let's say given a fixed height or a fixed width of. So we're going to have two pixels and let me just go ahead and create an auto layout container outside of it as well. And it's already horizontal. So let's just go ahead and remove the padding. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say this is going to be a component and I'm just creating it a component so we can have something consistent. But we probably don't even need to create a component, I think. So let's just go ahead and remove that and say this is going to be two pixels. Then we're going to have, let me just give some spacing in between them, two pixels. Then we're going to have four pixels. Then this is going to be eight. This is going to be 12. This is going to be 16. This is going to be 20 and then 24, and then 32, and then 40, and then 48, and then 64. <clears throat> we can go 56 if we want, but I think 60, well, maybe 56 is fine. So 56, 64, 80, and then, yeah, I think 80 is probably fine. And then let's just go ahead and stick with that. So this is gonna be two, this is gonna be four, eight, and let's probably just write the values out first. 8, this is 12 pixels, 16 pixels, 20 pixels, 24 pixels, 32 pixels, 40 pixels, 48, and then 56 pixels, this is 64 pixels, and this can be 80 pixels. So I think that probably is fine. And now let's go ahead and probably tweak some of these as well. So 12, 16, 20, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, and then 80. So the purpose of def defining is, is just to let us know what the grid system is going to look like and what the spacing is going to be in between elements, so on and so forth, and what we want to stick with. So we're not going to give spacing that's going to be, let's say, 3 pixels or 5 pixels or 10 pixels or anything along those lines. We're going to stick with 2, 4, 8, 12, 16. And as you can see, we have the multiples of 4 here for the most part. I've just given a 2 pixel because I think there are some cases in which we need a spacing of 2 pixels in between elements. So that's an anomaly here but so we have the multiples of 4 here and then after 24 pixels we just go with the multiples of 8 so we have 32 40 48 56 64 and then after 64 we can have if we want we can have 72 but it's not necessarily needed I don't think you're gonna really need 
a lot of values that are going to even scale up to that obviously when you have let's say spacing in between let's say sections so on and so forth and maybe the, the spacing between a section is let's say 160 so i don't have to define 160 here right because 160 is just 80 multiplied by 2 so i don't necessarily need to define every single um, iteration here but just to give you a reference of what this is going to look like one thing we're going to do after that is we're also going to include our icons so let's just go ahead and create an icons page i'm going to say icons basically just going to copy this thing here and then rename this to icons then we have our icons and you can add whatever text you want here i'm not necessarily going ahead and doing that and now you can go to your community so i'm going to go to my community basically let me just again resize this i'm going to go home and you basically need to search for hero icons and you're going to get a bunch of options you can basically choose this one and duplicate the file so once you have the file duplicated it's just going to open up <clears throat> and you can use this particular file as a library as well but i would recommend just going ahead and actually importing this in your design system so i'm just going to unlock the information stuff and I'm going to basically delete this rectangle. I'm going to go ahead, put all of this in a frame, copy it, and then go here and then paste it. And here we have our hero icons that are going to be included within the project. So now, as an example, if I want to access the mail icon, I can say shift I, search for mail. And as you can see, we have the hero icons here. We have the solid variation as well and the default variation as well. And now if you go ahead and let's say, if I use this anywhere, I can basically see all of the outline icon. I can see some of the solid icons as well, and I can search for them here as well. So it, uh, as an example, if I wanted to search for home, I can see that I have the home regular or that I have the home solid, and it's basically gonna be very easy to access them. So you can probably go ahead and start doing it like that. One thing that I do note here is that the icons in the solid variation are of a different size than the icons in the uh, outline variation and that's probably okay like if we actually encounter a problem what we can do is we can actually select all of these icons and uh, change the size but I don't think that's going to be needed necessarily and I would personally prefer if you go with let's say the solid variation stick with the solid variation if you go with the outlined variation I would prefer you stick with the outline variation because uh, there is a stark difference between these two different types of icons so I definitely don't want to use both of them and for that particular reason I'm actually just going to go ahead let me just go ahead and ungroup this thing and for that specific reason I'm actually going to remove all of these solid icons because personally I don't think I'm going to need them so I'm going to go here I'm going to select all of them I'm basically going to remove ungroup this as well and I'm going to remove the whole solid sidebar now we have all of these icons i'm going to again put them in a frame copy them and instead of let's say this frame i'm just going to go ahead and say paste to replace and now we have all the icons here now in order to better format the icons we can obviously go ahead and we can arrange them in a row and in order to do that like you can actually go to a con you can install a quant uh, quantizer plugin and in this plugin, what it actually allows you to do, it actually allows you to distribute elements uh, within certain columns. So as an example, if I just do, let's say, 230 columns, it's going to have 230 columns. That's basically going to arrange every icon in a singular column, and it's not going to have any rows. Currently, it has, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It has 10 rows. Uh, oh, sorry, it has 10 columns, and then it has different rows based on that. So what I want to do for now is I want to say that I want to have, let's say, 20 columns. So if I do 20 columns, it's going to appear like this. I can go ahead to the plugin again. I want to say, okay, 20 columns are maybe a bit too much. Let's try 16 columns. And as you can see, I think 16 columns looks fine, but I can actually run the plugin again. Instead of 16, I can say 18 columns maybe. Or maybe I think 17 columns or 17 columns is probably going to be okay for our particular use case and then obviously you can configure let's say uh, the sizing as well one thing i want to do here i want to just go ahead and actually change this to an auto layout i'm going to say auto in between them center the content here and basically just going to say uh, that it's going to expand till the icons just so it looks good 
I think this looks fine. I'm going to expand this text as well. We have our icons. I think these icons look good. And then obviously you can start using them. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon. And in the next video, we'll actually get started with some of our components. I think a lot of you have requested or are really curious about the button component. So we'll actually get started with the button component. But definitely let me know if there's any other component that you'd like to see in the next video. So that's going to be pretty much it. Take care. Bye.